I love all my MacBooks, Airs, Pros, all of them, but there's just one little thing that I absolutely hate. For the price these laptops are sold for, I expect it to be much better, but I found a solution, the Opal C1. So let's take a look at the most exciting tech product I held in a while. And you might ask, Arthur, why do you even need a good webcam? Well, everyone who works remotely or does a lot of online meetings doesn't have such questions. Here is how it works for me. I'm not doing this channel alone, I have a team. And having a team means being constantly in and out of meetings. So the webcam is running 24 seven. And I know that the webcam in MacBooks is quite good taking into account the size of the camera and the house in its end but it is just not enough. All right, so let's mount the camera up. And here you go. Here's my low res, super smooth face after going through the tiny sensor and a ton of post-processing. Can you really call this a webcam worthy of being a part of a $2,000 laptop? Me neither. And here is the Opal. You can literally see the pores of my skin. Everything's super crisp, the dynamic range, the colors just spot on. And boom, back to the full size mirrorless Sony that I normally use. Do you see much of a difference between this and Opal? This, this and Opal. Well, that's what I'm saying. If you think it's just me and my binoculars that I wear that's messing up my perception, I'm not the only one. Does the name Marcus Brownlee ring any bells? Yes, he uses it too. And he likes it so much that he's carrying with him in the bag. Now we're not impressed? Well, how about Casey Neistat being an admirer of this webcam? Yep, the vlogging god himself. Even Sarah Dietsch has one. And those are only the top creators I noticed. What I'm trying to say is that it's okay to want more from your webcam. And here I am, using it. So let's rewind a bit to the moment I unboxed it, because the packaging deserves your attention. When I open the box, the camera is the first thing I see. It's wrapped in paper and proudly shows the lens cover and the sheer size of it. Below that is a little thin box with a Type-C cable and below that a mount that you're gonna use to stick it to your Mac. And of course, a special tool that's needed to screw the mount to the webcam. I decided to talk about the packaging because it's something unexpected. From a webcam, you'd expect a plastic blister with a webcam shoved in there, a cheap cable and nothing more. But with Opal, as you see, the situation is almost Apple-like. This packaging has also won the award, so that's something you don't see very often. As for the webcam itself, just look at it. I get strong vibes of those old Google phones, something like Nexus 5, stylish, slightly boxy, with a huge camera lens. The designer that worked on Opal C1 has also laid his hand on Beats headphones, Pixel Watch, and even Google Clips. The metal housing is like a small brick and covered in the texture every photographer knows, a special pattern that was and still is used on many cameras. It looks just nice, so unobtrusive, like a piece of tech. And I like it so much. It doesn't try to seem smaller than it is, or thinner, or more rounded. It's very straightforward in what it is. A pro webcam. It's boxy, but that makes it utilitarian and even say that this design makes it perfect for any desk. It has no big logos or anything distracting. It's just a webcam. The webcam that you want to have on your desk because it just looks so good. After I unboxed it, I plugged it into my Mac and got my mind blown away with the image quality, of course. But how could guys at Opal achieve such a quality? All that thanks to its sensor, a 7.8 millimeters 4K Sony sensor that comes with an f1.8 six element glass lens to make it simpler the sensor has four times higher resolution than your typical macbook and lets in 2.4 times more light the lens isn't centered all because of the mic mesh mic mesh is an array of beam forming microphones that find and focus on the sound of your voice but hardware is nothing without software at first it may seem unnecessary for the webcam to have a separate app with settings but once you look a little bit closer. The software is what takes this hardware and really turns it into something spectacular. In the current version of the app, there are 
five tabs. Camera, audio, effects, manual, and settings. In the camera tab, you can manage zoom and switch on face lock, similar to Apple's center stage, where the camera follows you to keep you centered. You can also tweak the bokeh setting to control background blur, replicating apertures from f2.8 to 0.7. In the audio tab, you'll find noise cancellation controls, although this feature isn't available in the current software beta. And in the effects tab, you can apply and adjust video filters, control the touch up and tone sync features, and even pixelate your video. The manual tab lets you control things like focus lock, brightness, exposure, saturation, contrast, vibrance, and white balance. And over in the settings tab, you'll find common options like launching the app on startup and mirroring the video, but really stands out is gesture control. Right now, there are just two gestures you can use, hold up a peace sign to switch the video on or off, and pinch to toggle face lock. Here is my face with Oppo C1 after I set everything up properly, and here's the built-in MacBook webcam. Here's the Opal, and here's the Mac. Here's the Opal, and here's the Mac. This is a proper night and day difference. To me, this webcam is a savior. It's like Batman. Yeah, Batman. The savior I didn't know I needed, but the one I can't live without. Something like that. Before I got it, I didn't pay that much attention to how my videos looked, and no one did too. But after I got it, everything changed. Maybe it's a psychological thing, but I started to feel more in control. Better webcam gives a better sense of confidence, gives the need to act accordingly, to look accordingly, because now everyone can see my face in every detail. Also, the clients I work with are noticing that and visuals are only part of it because the microphone system is also great. These microphones are really good at recording my voice clearly without noise. I am not audiophile enough to hear a major difference between the Opal microphone and the built-in MacBook microphone, but just the way the voice is processed, I like it better than Opal, just saying. I wish every Mac had a webcam like this, but even still, I am not planning to switch on the Mac webcam again. I have Opal C1 now, and if you want to try it out yourself, I will leave a link in the description for you, so check it out, it's really worth it. <laughs>